Done. Good morning, everybody. He who learns but does not think is lost. He who thinks but does not learn is in great danger, said Confucius. So this national level student development program, which offers free online certificate course in effective English language development is organized by VVN Degree College, Bengaluru. VVN Degree College, Bengaluru is one of the pioneer institutions located in south part of Bengaluru, providing academically excellent value-based education for girl students. Since its inception, Vasavi Vidyani Ketan Degree College has pioneered the discipline of commerce. Our objective is to provide quality education to girl students and empower them. The college offers graduation course in commerce and has sustained its glorious track record all through the years. The Institute is located in one of the most posh locations of Bengaluru, which makes it easily accessible through metro, autos, buses, and which is very safe for girl students. Vivian Degree College is affiliated to Bengaluru City University and has created an indelible mark for upholding Indian culture and imparting quality education with the techno savvy corporate training programs to enable the students to be confident, responsible citizens with positive thinking and right orientation of mind to face life with all its opportunities and challenges. Now, admissions for first year BCom for girls is open at Vivian Degree College, Vanivilas Road, Vivipuram, Bengaluru, which offers along with BCom degree certificate courses for all students in computer fundamentals for first year, MS office for second year, Tally ERP 9 for third year, Coral Draw for third year, Photoshop for third year, GST for third year, Communication Skills for first year, Class Skills for second year, Campus to Corporate Training for third year students with a lot of encouragement and training for paper presentation in state and national conferences sports, NSS, eco club activities, scribe bank, dance, drama, and placement training activities, and many more for holistic development. Concession in the fees for the deserving meritorious student is also given. On this fifth day of effective English language development online course, I, Prasanna Urpika, HOD of English at Vivian Degree College, and the coordinator of this National Student Development Program, I'm privileged to welcome and introduce today's resource person, Professor Dr. Narsimha Murthy SV, Assistant Professor in Department of English, School of Engineering, Presidency University, Bangalore. He has MA, BA, MPhil, and PhD degrees to his credit. He has done his PhD on South African literature after apartheid under Dravidian University, Kupam, Andhra Pradesh. Professor S. V. Narsimhamurthy has worked as a lecturer in College of Arts, University of Zavia, Libya, North Africa from 2009 to 2011. He was a lecturer in Eritrea Institute of Technology and Teacher Education, Eritrea, Northeast Africa from 2003 to 2009. He has worked as a resource person at Ajim Premji Foundation, Bengaluru. His articles are published in peer-reviewed international journals. He was a resource person to deliver a talk on approaches, methods, and techniques of teaching English 
in FFD, FTP empowerment as enrichment, the language teacher, the new order at SRM Institute of Science and Technology, Chennai. He has delivered lectures on challenges of online teaching in the current scenario at VLES University, Chennai. Strategies for effective listening, the need of the art at Dr. MGR Educational and Research Institute, Chennai, and many other educational institutions. On behalf of management, chief executive for academics and administration, principal, faculty members, I extend a hearty welcome to Professor Dr. Narsimha Murthy. I also welcome Sri Arun Kumar, President of VVN Trust, CAIS Prasad, Secretary General of VVN Trust, Garning Council Chairman, Sri Rajkumar, Co-Chairman, Sri Akhilesh Babu, Principal, Professor G. Venugopal, Chief Executive of Academics and Administration, Dr. Sheshamurthy, and all the faculty members. I extend a warm welcome to all the English learners attending this online course. So over to Professor Narsimurthy. The topic is functions of language. Thank you, Professor Prasanna, for your uh, very elaborate introduction. And I'm very pleased uh, for two things. The way you have begun the session will take us, rather will you will sail us through both the sessions, I believe. And second thing is VVN is the college that I have seen since decades. Being a student of the National College Basungudi, VVN, I was very close to VVN. I, I lived there for three years. That's another reason I have to say. Actually, a school when I first saw way back in early 80s or late 70s. Uh, thank you for inviting me, for giving me this opportunity to share some of my thoughts with uh, English language enthusiasts. So I will begin uh, directly with my presentation now, functions of language. Basically, any language, maybe English, Kannada, or Tulu, or whatever it may be, a language is basically used for communication. And most of our children think that language is used only for two important purposes. The first one is speaking. The second one is writing. Let us see how language operates in, it, in its own way, in different ways, at different stratas and spheres of life. So let me begin my formal class now. Yeah. I'm Dr. Narasimha Murthy, Assistant Professor of English, Department of English School of Engineering Presidency, University of Bangalore. I'll be happy to share some of the thoughts or the ideas that I have about functions of language with you. Let us begin with this. Introduction, what is a language? Language is a primary means of socialization. More than communication, I feel socialization is the first path for communication. Unless you meet somebody, unless you talk to somebody, 
you know communication is not possible communication does not happen at all so it is a primary source means of socialization <laughs> not only that language <laughs> is a carrier of our culture so whenever we go out you know i have seen this in india and outside india also so the language takes its culture also and this helps children to develop habits and traditions habits and traditions i'll just give one simple example how culture habits and traditions develop with us see today is a very auspicious day for many of us performing varamahalakshmi puja see this puja varamahalakshmi puja was not celebrated in my village about 40 years ago in fact we had not heard of this we had not heard of this in my village only a two three families they used to celebrate for many of us you know it was another as casual day like just like any other day so i came to bangalore in 1982 from then onwards you know oh it's a big gala thing here that is why i said so the language culture habits and traditions are built along with the language and not only that we use this language to interact with our social political and economic power structures that what i mean you know the language that i use at home social and the language that i use with my superiors political and people with some economic power so i am talking about the social class elite class rich class now the language differs with each structure you know the language differs the nature of language differs and basically language is a medium of for the construction and transmission of knowledge this is what we see language is used as a medium of constructing and transmission the best example would be this session see i have constructed some knowledge and i am transmitting it to and i am sharing it with some of my friends and also articulation of ideas so language is a means of articulation of ideas see mm-hmm. most of the time you know we can express our feelings and emotions in other than words but when it comes to ideas and thoughts you know la- words and language becomes essential in short language constitutes humans and their identities we will see how this identity creation happens through language very soon now coming back to the uses of language see language is used to express one's sentiments feelings and enthusiasm see before we speak you know we can see that the person's facial expressions reveals much before the words so sentiments feelings and enthusiasm and uh, these things you know we use language to express very clearly and also some extraordinary purposes like compose that means uh, writing a verse writing a piece of poem and to talk and also sign language sign language we will see i i'll elaborate all these things when i take up the functions of language as such so here individuals work with language yeah we work with language because i'm using english as a medium of instruction now play with language for when you become very creative you know very innovative you try to play with language and also acquire individuals living with language this happens in a very very typical way in our country for example if i know tamil and if i go to tamil nadu you know, for me the business with people becomes very easy if any tamilian comes here and if i speak to him in tamil you know this is what i call by acquire individuals so a kind of a language affinity will will create a a very special bond between the people using that language not only that 
we court and tempt personally we purchase and offer business we affront and acclaim argument in favor or against all by means of language so all these things are possible through language these are possibilities or rather the way we use language for different things now i'll take up functions of language see basically the function refers to function of language refers to the purposes for which i use the language there are different purposes different activities that we do in our day to day life so how what is the purpose what is the purpose? for example am i trying to convince you am i trying to inform you am i trying to make an argument here am i trying to express am i trying to control so all these are functions of language so here in the purpose for which i am using language is the function of language here you know there are plenty of formal and informal purposes so language is used in all context formal as well as informal context and there are specific grammatical structures and vocabulary that with each language function i told you the language that i use at home i cannot i cannot take it to my class in the language that i use in my class i cannot take it to my social group meeting or outside when i talk to my friends so like that the grammatical structure and vocabulary also differs from one situation to another situation depending on the purpose of our communication so when i talk about language functions that means the reason for using language why am i using this particular phrase this particular idiom this particular vocabulary this particular word why i am using so so that differs that is what function of language directs us tells us guides us which word should i use and where and when what where when this determines the function of a language and the most basic function of any language is communication we communicate and communication happens at different levels in different spheres and the basic and the fundamental function of any language is communication and it is communication is nothing but to give and receive messages we do this between ourselves we do when i speak you know you will understand and of course when you feed give you feedback i will also receive so it is a process communication is a process where we use the medium the medium is language and the sender is there the receiver is there and in between there is a medium that is a language and this communication process is complete only when the intended meaning of the sender and the receiver is the same then the communication cycle is complete and language must be investigated in all the variety of its functions we will discuss we will see what are the types of functions very soon and it is very difficult to see the functions of language because they are deeply rooted in the whole of human behavior sometimes you know we will get confused am i informing am i expressing i'll give you examples of all those things when it comes to particular function and there is little in the functional side of our conscious behavior that means when we use language we do not know exactly what are we attempting at it's it's very difficult to say that i am doing this function i am doing only this function because most of the time functions of language they mix or rather interface with one another they they are subtle very subtle and like that you know we have very complicated process of identifying the function of language now 
this session you know talks about seven main functions of language in this session i am going to focus on seven main functions of language they are the first one is expressive and communicative functions this is the first uh, function the second one is interpretative function the second one is control function control function and the fourth one is functions of remembering and thinking remembering and thinking and the fifth one is the discovery of one's name the sixth one is social functions of language social functions of language a very important thing because there is a lot of change in this social functions of language and this works in a very very intrinsic manner and the last one is the creative function the creative function we will see how these functions work and i'll take one by one one by one and we will discuss and we will learn how these functions operate and how these functions are observed by us let us take the first one expressive and communicative function this is the basic most basic function as i told you communication is the first function that we use language for this is the most basic function here this we do make an attempt to express something and it's always a sudden expression sudden state of fear delight pain or confusion so this is basically uh, sudden expressions of our feelings our emotions and remember they are not deliberate it's not intentional and then it's not a conscious expression it's actually a spontaneous immediate response for example i will be using a small pin by chance you know i prick my finger and immediately you know without even a fraction of a second i will express my mouth will my, the language automatically expresses the pain the shock whatever it may be and it's not directed at towards any other object and another thing you know is we have a group of species or members you know particularly in situations of danger situations of danger this is common not only among human beings but also among animals they have special cries special physical action body language to express this it for it is actually a kind of warning to other species especially in situations of danger and it's instinctual that means i told you instinctively we i respond i respond and in lower organisms also in animals we find this for example just i'll give two examples here like egg these two you know they they signify our disgust for example we will be waiting for a bus and the bus never comes for our uh, good luck and you know we we always feel that at that it always happens check so here the word is not necessarily used to inform but it's only expressing like swear words exclamatory words exclamatory words oh alas are you all these things you know they they are communicative and they are very expressive and the, the, look at the last sentence that i have i am using here as an example the car is big the bus is crowded this is a clearly informative and also expressive it expresses certain element that the wish the the meaning is almost hidden here the intention is hidden here because it clearly indicates that the person who is speaking is indicating that he wants to take the car 
he wants to take the car so like this you know the functions of language is very very subtle and intricate so now we will go to the next uh, function interpretative interpretative is it's an occurrence or expression that serves as stimulus to others stimulus to others so when i give an example it will be very clear it's actually becoming aware of interpreting a particular situation particular situation here i i told you the cry of one animal in the face of danger is interpreted by other member of the species for example let me give one more example you will be walking on the road suddenly there will be a thud sound and you will see you will see some vehicle hitting another vehicle and that sound itself you know it gives a signal it gives a signal you can interpret that there is an accident you have not seen that you have not seen that you are only in interpreting it the sound and the creaking of the tires all these things you know you are interpreting and it's a signal that yes it's a cautioning you yes you should be careful and usually you know the other members especially in animal groups you know it's a caution not to come and this happens with all the animals and they create one particular sound so to represent that danger and this interpretative function is very obvious at the human level it it goes without saying it's a kind of an inborn technique or tactic that human beings have developed for example when i say interpreting is nothing but understanding a non verbal non linguistic sign like a traffic signal automatically we know that red signal means we have to stop red signal means we have to stop yellow prepare green leave which does not happen in bangalore which does not happen in bangalore red signal means the rider would be looking this side and that side he'll be looking for the policeman and you know what happens next signs and graphics in a manual so we have we are try to interpret we are going to read those ideas thoughts in the form of uh, non graphic so non linguistics and non verbal forms we'll come to the control function this is something very very strange that i found when i was preparing uh, for this functions of language there is a social dimension here than the individual dimension a social function a social dimension that, that social point of view is here usually as associations get established between certain states of existence and a stimulus on the one hand and certain sounds there is a reproducibility of a reaction what i mean is certain associations or certain sounds and words are associated with certain reactions certain reactions so let me give an example here when the child cries when the child cries you know he may be angry or suffering from pain so when i whenever i give this example i think of one important advertisement for a very long time for decades we have seen this advertisement of woodward's grape water magu alta ide woodward grape water kodi so this this i remember this here the cry in turn in automatically will control the mother or even the animal mother both will rush and help the child will take care of the child feed the child and look after the child so here the child is controlling the mother by certain making certain sounds that is the child language and this is the beginning of control this is the beginning of the control for the child for example every gesture and symbol indicates the direction of communication in society this control language can be realized in this forms like rules 
statutes, laws, and others. See, for example, we know that we know that you know, there is a law, there is a rule that we should not drive without helmet, but we do drive. So still, you know, this kind of a control, that means the police or the law, the authority controls you, controls your driving. It's for most of us, you know, we wear helmets. I'm talking about our young generation. We wear helmets for the, the control function of the language, not, not the safety thing, not the safety thing, the control things. For example, commands and requests are a very good examples of control function. For example, I want a cup of tea. Now, you may go home and ask your mother, I want a cup of tea. You know that this is a kind of demand. You know that the demand will be met. Or the teacher in the class may close the door. Close the door. So like this, you know, the teacher takes the control of the whole class and the teacher controls the student also at the same time. We'll go to the next uh, important function of language that is remembering and thinking. Just imagine without language, is this possible to think? Is it possible to imagine without the use of words? Probably there will be no clarity. There will be no situation where it's almost impossible to think or to recall to remember without the use of language. Especially, this is something very beautiful aspect of language according to me. All of us, you know, before we speak, before we start uttering a word, you know, we think, we know that. We know that, yes, thinking is the first thing that we have, that happens in our mind. See, now also I'm thinking what to say next how to frame my sentence. So here, you know, most important aspect, the beauty of language is now we encode experiences, store them, retrieve and decode them. Retrieve, encode means we, we understand, we get that experience. Decode means we express that. Through language, we will give vent, we'll, language is the, channel through which you know we articulate we express and also our experiences are translated into thoughts and the, we engage in the process in different types each person conceives each person perceives in his own way understands in his own way like you know every student learns in his own way some learn by reading books, some learn by listening to others, some learn by doing it. So like this, you know, our thoughts and experiences are translated through language. Even when I think, I use language. Even when I remember, I use my language. So thinking involves visualizing. Most of the time, you know, when you close eyes, the, the whole, the incident opens completely in that, on that screen of your mind. That, that is what, you know, the inner mind, insight. And also you remember. That is means send signals from memory. Some memory may be short memory or long memory, but still, you know, that memory functions mm -hmm. and it process of different types and not only language, there are many other things here. And the, these emotions, you know, they produce patterns of thinking. See, our patterns of thinking are constructed by our environment. See, for example, one thing may become very good for one situation, then it may not be the same at some other occasion. So it differs, the patterns of thinking. And moreover, you know, that internal dialogue, internal dialogue, something is a wonderful thing for many of us. All of us, you know, whenever we listen, whenever we read, you know, we, we do it some kind of an internal dialogue. We talk to ourselves. We talk to ourselves to improve our emotional state and thinking pattern. Emotional state, see some very great 
tragedy that you face in life you know it will not remain with you for a long time you think you think and you you digest it and you know that you cannot remain the same way for long so so remembering thinking remembering is a great boon for us at the same time you know forgetfulness is no less boon according to me otherwise our existence would have become very disastrous now we remember at the same time you know we forget and another beautiful function of language is the discovery of one's name fortunately we have a small infant in our family i have been observing that infant two infants they are twins now i have been observing those infants and i months it is a vegetable existence now the moment i say inu or the moment i say mino the inu or mino will turn towards me so that means the discovery that that he or she has a name that's a, that's the beauty of language so every child loves to you can see that every child especially you know when they join school you know they'll write name their name their name everywhere on the wall on the book everything wherever it's available right so i kind of an stamping the identity a sense of self identity which leads to feelings like me mine others not me a kind of a, a social sense of distancy social sense of identity so this develops and this is a very crucial for the psychological development of the individual probably all of us will learn our language through this discovery that yes i am murti my name is murti i am called so this this is the beginning of identity self identity and we have social functions of language social functions of language see um, mm, this is something very typical of language it's not just the individual function it's a social function social function there are two types of social functions let me deal with one and when i come to the end of this slide you know i'll discuss another uh, social function it's a not just the personal identity we have seen that the name is a personal identity now it's a language which brings a social identity social identity how can language create a social identity it's a sense of belongingness to a particular group particular group especially social proximity proximity and distance see for example a group of speaker people speaking one particular kind of language here i am not speaking of one language particular kind of language particular kind of language like i'll i'll give one example to make it clear mandya language mandya language for example the moment i say enla antama the whole karnataka now knows that i i belong to that particular group i am from mandya or mangalore kannada like if you go to hotels you know especially udupi hotels you know there's a en beko rai re rai re marai re rai re is something very very respectful addressing of an elderly person rai re or hubli karnataka that's north karnataka bare aram re so all these things you know they they their characteristics of a language and when you speak when you use this language you know you create a social identity social identity not only that the class differences caste differences in using language the fact the example would be the elites the language used by elites and the language used by working class in in english itself you know there are different types of english in england itself you know there's a pidgin when you write and when you speak the language differs i'll i'll give one clear example here from tulu language where there are, when i try to learn some tulu 
because I have a lot of relatives speaking Tulu. When I tried to learn Tulu, you know, I was using one kind of language and I was speaking to a, a Batru, a, a person, a Brahminical uh, origin person. And he was telling, hey, what is this Tulu you are speaking? Then he told me there is a, a Batru Tulu and Shetru Tulu. Batru Tulu and Shetru Tulu. Then only I realized, yes, we have. Even at home, you know, we, 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 see, we have this distinction and differentiation between language from one social group to another social group. So this is the social function of language, creating a social identity of language. And now another social function is, you know, this is we learn from our environment, our surroundings, making a request, apologizing, asking for information. These are other more examples of social function. So language functions socially in society, as well as that language determines to which area that I belong to, which group that I belong to, rather which subset I belong to, which subset that I belong to. So here, you know, it's, it makes a very clear distinction. And this is the beauty of language, the intricacy of language. Creative function, probably I have come to the end of functions of language because I know that this is the last function of language. The, the imaginative and creative activity is a very crucial role that language place. Can you imagine, can you think of writing a novel or a poetry without language? Probably without language, I would not be able to sit here and interact with you. So the beauty of language is here again, there's a contrast, there's a contradiction here. It not only helps us to control and regulate our cognitions, our understanding, so we understand the world through language. We control, we regulate our thoughts. We regulate our ideas, beliefs, or such things. But at the same time, you know, it allows us, it enables us to break free and engage in creative imagination. At the same time, you know, it gives a scope. It gives a scope to think beyond, to think about, Above normal. I'm not saying it's abnormal, above normal. Like, like I would like to use one uh, simple proverb saying in Kannada, Ravi Kanadana Kavi Kanda. So this is a beautiful proverb. See, this is what the creative function of a language. And language, at the same time, you know, you can see that creative delus delusions and belief systems in the mentally ill lunatics, insane people, you know, they, 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 they talk something that is not at all connected with one idea to another idea. They blabber something, but you know, they, it, they use language again. They use language again. See, the language which has a structure, which has a beautiful systematic arrangement of world order, again, you know, it misses there. It misses the complete, the track is, they go out of track. When we use language, we follow a track. We follow an order, whereas there is no order here. It is full of disorder there. And here, you know, when I say creative, it is the original use of the established possibilities of the language. And I'll give one uh, clear example at the end of uh, this slide itself. Possibilities, the various different ways of use of language how a poet uses language, how a common man uses language, the possibilities, it creates established structures, formal structures. And also we, a writer, a creative writer always goes beyond these possibilities. He creates something new possibilities, which are not there already in the language. A poet goes beyond these. That is what above normal, about normal. So a poet becomes possessed with language when he takes that language as a tool of communication. Like an example would be the language of poetry, poetry, 
language of poetry. Like for example, miles to go before I sleep. Probably one of the best and oft quoted lines uh, in this uh, frost is this, miles to go before I sleep, miles to go before I sleep. Very favorite uh, lines of Jawaharlal Nehru. And this, you know, depends on the person's perception, ability to understand. <coughs> and his role, his experiences, because remember, <coughs> meaning is always created by the reader. But another beautiful line that most of us, even our students have read and recited is 10,000 saw I at a glance. 10,000 saw I at a glance. I'll just take one minute break. Yeah, thank you. So here, sorry, 10,000 saw I at a glance. This is a famous poem by Wordsworth. Now, most of us must have by hearted English teachers, you know, probably there is no English teacher that has not read this poem and that has not taught this poem. You can see that 10,000 saw I at a glance. If you give this sentence to a primary school or high school student, you know, immediately those who, who has no knowledge of words for poems, immediately will say that it's wrong. It's wrong. This is the beauty of language. The poets, they can use language in a different way. This is what we call creativity. So they express much more. The reader's response theory of now says that meaning is constructed by the reader. Meaning is constructed by the reader, depending on his understanding, depending on his cognitive power, depending on his previous knowledge and experience that he can bring in association with the words that he is reading or studying. So these are the different types of functions. Now I'll come to conclusion. See here, language is a basic instrument of human articulation and communication. So language is something that is we are born with congenital, congenital. It, it is used, enables, it enables individuals to interface and charge, to caution and welcome to stay digest thought. See, this is something that I like very much. So the thought of something and how you digest that, how you internalize that thought, and especially in our quest for higher learning, this is something that we learn about a few things. So this session has given you something to learn. How kind of higher learning, how do you digest this? How do you internalize this? How do you understand this? And how do you make use of this? So all these things, you know, the language is a fundamental apparatus that enables every individual. It's a, an imaginative medium, imaginative medium to express our thoughts, ideas, and feelings. Not only that, we use language for a number of purposes in finite number of purposes. We may write letter, we may send notes, we may gossip our with friends, we may give speech, talking to ourselves in the mirror, talking to ourselves in the mirror. Now I remember whenever I conduct a session like this, you know, it's something like talking to myself because I can see and remember, language is understood in its relationship to social structure. So language operates in society. Language gets meaning in context, in, in the social structure. On the whole, you know, language plays a very critical and crucial role in our life. So uh, you, you cannot imagine a society without language. It's impossible. Probably we may live in a vacuum. There will be mm, man will perish without language. So it is impossible to think of any place or situation without the help of language. 
so in every context in every situation in every place you know we need language language is a must for all of us and more than communication and expression you know language has got this psychological and social functions as i told you the establishment of an individual identity social identity this is the psychological and social function which are very crucial in our present day world they are becoming very very crucial and very very important because in in a time of corona in, in the pandemic times you know we know we we throng you don't know many of my colleagues teachers you know they want to go to class they want to mix with students so we are, we are all you know behaving like a fish out of water so we want to go back to our institution we go we want to meet students we want to discuss with them so like that you know especially that's what when i say today's world now this psychological and social functions are very very important because you need somebody to share you need somebody to talk to you you need a person who responds to your feelings and emotions and that is the the base for all social relationships social settings and now i'll this is my last but one slide i'll summarize now language helps us to express our observations whatever that we observe whatever that i see around me you know i can say i can express not only that to express our thoughts not only that to express our feelings and more than that to express our needs and is it is so powerful that it expresses our identities i was speaking to you our, our personal identity as well as our social identity both are established through language not only that it affects our credibility see i have an idea i have a feeling i have a thought and how i support that idea how i make myself credible to my supporters or to my uh, people who oppose me you know i should be i should support myself so i i create a credibility through language not only that it serves as a means of control so we know how to control our elders our children are very good at blackmailing us the, the very language itself you know it 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 very clearly indicates yes he wants this therefore he is using this language not only that we perform actions see for example close the door i told you the moment i say close the door one student will go and close the door so language is used to perform an action also and it creates the possibility of countless word games puzzles jigsaws all these things not only language has a humorous use of language see you can enjoy you can enjoy the language the best example would be stand up comedians they use language to entertain us and most important quality of language is it's dynamic it always it is changing change it keeps on changing and changing and not only that now we add especially english english is a language where it accepts words from all the cultures all the languages it develops every year you know new words are added to english like for example guru is a very beautiful word in sanskrit now we have management gurus guru is accepted by english not only that language not only that language we have something very important something very interesting is the creation of slang creation of slang how do we create slang just i'll give example of two languages how those languages have influenced kannada like for example many of our young generation our college students they say hey macha this matcha was never used during 80s or 90s it was never used by 
person who was using Kannada. No, it was a typical word from Tamil. Typical word from Tamil. So that is almost it has become Kannada now. And one more example is from Telugu. There is a saying in Telugu, Anta seen ledu. Anta seen ledu. Uh, the meaning differs. The, it, it, it depends on the context. But in Kannada, I have seen people using astasinilla. Astasinilla. So this is the beauty of language. It's not just the language, the slang. So I'll conclude my session giving one personal example, personal example of how I learned Tamil. How I learned Tamil. I was associated with Tamil friends, a lot of Tamil friends, and I learned Tamil. And one day I was using it in my staff room in one of the African countries. And there was a, a professor from Tamil Nadu, very senior person, Tamil Nadu. And I, I was just uh, abusing somebody in Tamil. And uh, he observed one thing. I observed one thing. Then uh, he was very quiet and calm till I finished. And he said, Murthy, now I believe that people do not pick language. They pick slang also. Pick slang also. Because the word that I used, you know, is very familiar in Tamil, vechita apu. Vechita apu. This is the word that I used. And that day, he, he, he reminded me that, yes, people do not acquire, do not learn language. They also learn or acquire the slang of the language. Okay, this is my last slide. Thank you all for your patient listening. And the last one is any questions and the session is open for discussion. And I think I have taken exactly 52 to 56 minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Madam, you have to unmute yourself. Prasanna, ma'am. Yeah, there, there. Uh, if you don't mind, shall I stop yes, sharing? Yes, yes. Yeah. As you wish. Yeah, Let that would be fine. Okay. 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 So, very effectively, you have discussed the various shades of functions of language. Uh, you have also highlighted that language is very powerful as it expresses our identity. And in this 21st century, we do very well know how important communication skills are. More than what we speak, how we speak is very, very important because we, are, we don't make use of the language just to give the mm, information but also the information that we give should also be very effective. So now, could you give us some tips regarding how to acquire this effectiveness in the delivery of our ideas, in the use of the language, English language? Yeah. The first and foremost thing should be, I have used three things three WH words here, what, where, when, and I'll add one more, who. See, I should be very clear about what I am teaching, what I'm going to communicate, what, that content part. I should prepare very well with my content. Then second, where am I speaking? That means the place. Am I teaching my students or am I talking to my colleagues, or am I socializing with my friends, or am I at home? So this place becomes a very crucial thing. And the third one is when, the occasion. 
is it a formal occasion or informal occasion and the, the last one is who to whom am i speaking to for example this session i am giving it to students i believe that this is a, a students uh, proficiency development program i am giving it to students if i give it to my colleagues you know probably the way i presented will not be the same the content may be the same but even content i would like to say the content may not be the same so these four wh questions you know one should ask oneself and uh, as you have quoted you know language becomes very very crucial with especially with our emotions and feelings because most of the times you know the word meaning is not taken we have been misunderstood more than we un- we have been understood our intentions and feelings are not expressed through words so we should be very we should have that clarity of expression and that clarity of expression comes through the kind of a thinking and not only thinking by considering if i say that am i hurting her if i say that is it conveyed properly so all of those things you know i should think before i think before ink so i should be very careful i should prepare i should prepare prepare properly then talk and another beautiful thing about most of our i'm i'm keeping our students in mind when i say that we have stopped listening we have almost stopped listening we don't want to listen because we think that we know everything and i have seen many of our younger generation before the teachers or the elders complete their sentence you know they jump to conclusion yes i know what i speak you speak in the same way i know and immediately you know they do not allow us to finish our sentence that means a good listener can become a good speaker listen listen with patience while listening you know you can analyze it you can critically think about it and then respond now in fact we react this reacting is not safe it is not good it is not proper i want people to respond listen and then respond then automatically your your communication will be very good very effective also yes listening is one of the skills uh, to improve the language l s r w w so listening yes listening speaking reading and writing so the first one is listening a good listener will acquire the best of the knowledge that is that so you have said that situational based our language should be used our language should be delivery of our language should be situation based now how to acquire this good language with good vocabulary yeah. and all do you suggest student because there are many students who are asking this question that how is it through reading and what kind of reading of course we have different sessions for all that but students want to know it from you yeah see there are two things uh, when i was preparing for this you know i just highlighted two things but i did not make use of this here see the first thing is developing vocabulary see during our times developing vocabulary you now we had to go to libraries there was <clears throat> no scope like we have at the current uh, time see vocabulary as i told you, you know the best thing would be as you said listening listen to people listen to teachers listen to tv anchors listen to tv news you know my problem is most of us we watch but we don't listen so by listening to all these things see there are so many avenues of acquiring vocabulary for us we have to go to the to library or dictionary or thesaurus that is the only source that i had during the early 80s but now the whole world is in a global village context you have exposure listen to people listen see uh, i'll give one concrete example many of our students you know they listen to 
beautiful english songs beautiful english songs and and they will be nodding their heads my question is how many of you how many of you think of the the lyrics one beautiful way you know something that you love to listen to you know take the lyrics go to google take the lyrics learn that lyrics since you are enjoying it you know you will be very fast you know you will acquire you learn that lyrics and not only that here while listening you know you will also acquire the you will also get the pronunciation it's not just the accent also you will get so vocabulary building is something very very essential very essential and i i owe all my vocabulary to my english teacher one mr suresh m holla i owe he is from mangalore he, he is the one who is responsible to teach me a few words in tulu that's why he was the one who taught me hey batru tulu shetru tulu that i gave example now which you are familiar with already so they you know by listening i have learned tamil i have learned tulu so english you know expo- we cannot say that our children are not exposed to english now there are various avenues especially in a city like bangalore the moment you come out you know you will be listening to lot of english you will come across english in your day to day life listen and develop vocabulary not only listen try to use the same vocabulary in your life that is how to make use of that how to make use of that again use that vocabulary and this vocabulary itself you know develop vocabulary use it in speaking and in writing and automatically your language will improve language will improve and you should try a few things like developing vocabulary using the vocabulary creating an occasion to speak creating an occasion to speak, interacting with your uh, friends the socializing you know you you learn a lot of things listen these are the few uh, tips that i can give to improve your english yes you have suggested to the music lovers that music is not just for entertainment it can also be used for developing language effectively that's a very good suggestion sir so we are at the end of the session thank you sir thank you so much for uh, giving different um, shades of the functions of the language and also emphasizing how important it is and how there are different shades of language also like one language will have so many dialects and how we should be able to identify them and how we have got to make use of the language depending on the situation on behalf of management uh, ca and a the principal faculty members and all the students i express my gratitude for accepting our invitation and being part of this national level student development program thank you very much sir thank you thank you thank you sir i'll be in the session but i'll mute uh, my audio okay. and video yes sir yes thank you well participants shortly we are going to start with the second session of the fifth day of this national level student development program on app based language learning by professor alice cherian we know that today knowledge is at the tip of our fingers how could we make use of this unleashing the hidden secret about knowing and learning knowledge knowing and learning effective english language will be um, unveiled by professor alice cherian i consider it to be my privilege to introduce professor alice cherian professor alice cherian hails from karwar the coastal place of karnataka she is presently working as an assistant professor in the department of english government first grade college kr puram bangalore she has a teaching experience 
of 14 years. She is also a trainer and has successfully trained many students for exams such as TOEFL, GRE, IELTS, and CAT. She takes keen interest in debates and quizzes and has participated in many national and international forums. Professor Alice Cherian's motto is to inspire students to learn and help them to figure out their aptitudes and how they can be of service to the community. As a teacher, she practices participatory and experiential learning. On behalf of the management, CA and A, principal, all the faculty members and students, I welcome Professor Alice Sherian. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. A warm welcome to all the English learners to this webinar. Uh, this is Alice Cherian, Assistant Professor, Department of English, GFGC Kharpuram, Bangalore. It's really my privilege to be a part of this webinar series organized by Vivian Degree College, a pioneer institution in Bangalore providing academically excellent quality education to girls students. The national level student development program by Department of English on effective English language development is a well thought and a much needed program under the aegis of Professor G. Venu Gopal, sir, the principal, and Professor Prasanna Uripikar, the IQAC coordinator. My special thanks to them for this opportunity. Uh, learning is, never, is a never ending process. To continue our learning without any hurdles, technology has come to our aid. Technology is not just a tool, it can give learners a voice that they can, uh, is there any, am I audible, ma'am? Yes, yes, you are audible. Yes. You okay. want to share the screen? Yes, okay. yes. yes. Uh, screen sharing is enabled. You yeah. can share okay. the screen. Okay. Right. So I'll be starting uh, today, you know, focusing on how we can use technology to improve our language, right? Uh, you know, uh, there is a Doha in um, uh, Kabir Das poem. He says that uh, the Kasturi Murga, which is there, it has its perfume in its belly, but it searches everywhere. Where does the smell come from? So sometimes when I look at the students, you know, really finding out, uh, figuring out how to, you know, improve our English, uh, I just find that that is very much available at your fingertips, you know, in the mobile apps. So today I'm going to venture out a small session on how you can use these mobile apps to improve your language. So I'll be just uh, starting my uh, screen sharing. Yes. So Charles Darwin once said, you know, it is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is the most adaptable to change that survives. So today, uh, you know, we are in the, I can say the most difficult times, right? And we have adopted our ways in many ways. You know, we have adapted it in many ways. Our teaching, our learning has adapted in many ways. So we need to know what is the effective way, the best way during this era to learn a language, okay? Uh, so technology is just not a tool here. Technology is not just a tool here. It can give learners a voice that they may not have had before. So technology can give you the wings, you see, to fly. And how you can use this technology is what I'm going to deal with today, okay? Uh, so let us first start with the conviction, what we need, you know, before we learn anything, we need to have the conviction. Yes, I need to learn this. Or if there is a, you know, we, there should be a recognition or a realization that yes, I have to learn this language or I have to learn this skill, right? 
So let us just find out what are, what are the reasons, you know, there may be n number of reasons that you need to, why you need to learn English. However, today I'll just point out some of the reasons that I found to be very, you know, uh, useful in bringing that conviction to you. I know all of you have that conviction and that's the reason you are, you know, attending this session. So uh, English is one of the most widely spoken languages in the world. That is very important to note. It is the lingua franca, that is most of the people, you know, even if their first language is not English, they use English to communicate, okay? So like for example, 350 million people use English as first language, whereas half a billion people in the world use English for communication. So it makes up to be a you know, good number of people using English for their daily needs for communication, right? As well as when you see English is a language of opportunities because it will open up opportunities for you in the corporate sector, in the MNCs where basically the language of communication is English, right? So job wise, you will have a lot of opportunities coming your way. And then English gives you access to some of the world's best universities. See, I have been uh, with the students who are really, you know, struggling. They just, they're so committed that they are so, uh, they want to, you know, study in certain universities in the world, right? And that, is pos that was possible for them because they knew the language so well, right? So this language is definitely a language of opportunity and it opens up your access to many best universities in the world. Right, as well as English is, a, you know, a language of knowledge because if you take internet, if you take any online resources, they are all given to English language. So you will definitely have, uh, you know, upper uh, cutting edge in accessing the knowledge which is available out there. So apart from these, you know, casually, I would like to discuss also some other things. That is, English is the is a very simple language, honestly. It is a very simple language, okay? Compared to the Indian languages, English is a very simple language. So once you come out of that phobia, it becomes very easy for you to master the language. And the funniest part is, if you know more than two languages, your memory is going to improve. That is what the science says. So as Indians, you see, learning one more language would definitely help or boost our memory, right? So there are many reasons I would, uh, I would like to, you know, uh, go on giving, but today my focus would be on how you can effectively improve your language by using an app which is available in your mobile, okay? So let us start with what is app-based learning? Is it uh, really working? You know, some of you may already know how Baijus has been doing in the academics. Uh, you know, there are many apps, uh, like, especially, as I told you, TOEFL, IELTS, IELTS, GRE, these are the exams which you need to mandatorily get through. These are basically English exams which you need to mandatorily get through to get into the universities abroad. So all these exams also can, you know, you can prepare for these exams using just the apps. You know, you need not shell out so much of money out there into the coaching centers. If you just have the basic idea what it, what it expects from you, these exams, then you can definitely prepare through the apps in your mobile, right? So you can prepare for exams. There is Baijus. There is so many other apps which have come up, you know, the Cake, the Cambly. These are the apps which are making huge change, you know, bringing huge change in the way we learn today, right? So an app-based learning is, a very is very prevalent in the current scenario, especially during this lockdown and unlockdowns. You know, the learning process, if, if it is not hindered, if it should not be hindered, definitely technology is, is the best way we can opt for. So it is also known as M-learning, that is mobile learning, and is a new way to get access to a variety of content available online using a mobile, right? So mobile learning is the easiest way for students to learn, right? Uh, when I say, uh, why is it not, you know, when you say mobile learning, why is it mobile and not a laptop or a desktop? Does that also come into this? No, today we are, I'm going to focus only on mobile as a gadget, how you can use it for your learning, okay? Uh, so most of you would, might, would be only aware of WhatsApp. You know, when you say app, you know WhatsApp, but uh, there are many apps which can help you better than WhatsApp. Okay, so you are all digital natives. You, the students whom I'm addressing, most of you are born after 2000. So you're all coming under Generation Z, 
you see, you're very compatible and very comfortable with using uh, technology. So I call you digital natives because you, you are savvier uh, with the technology and it becomes easy for you, entertaining, engaging for you to learn through an app, okay? So we are all digital migrants, you know? So compared to us, you will be in a better position to learn language through apps, okay? Uh, yeah, there are many apps customized according to the varied needs. The choice lies with the student to opt what he want to learn, unlike to learn from a rigid curriculum, okay? For example, you go to any other, uh, you know, coaching centers, many are there, which promise to teach you English. Uh, they will definitely charge you somewhere 4K to 7K, you know, thousands. And uh, they also have a set syllabus. Okay, so you need to go according to the syllabus. It's not your choice that you can't say, no, in this class, teach me this. And the next class, I'm interested to learn, interested to learn verb. You can't choose. There is no choice for you, right? Whereas when it comes to app, it can be customized, customized according to your needs. Most of the apps are tailored according to the needs of the students. So there is no rigidity, right? And also there are different categories of apps, which I'll take, take you a tour of those, uh, you know, a small introduction to those uh, apps also today. So there are different categories of, of apps here. There are some apps which use grammar, you know, spelling, word, the conventional method of teaching English language. There are some apps which use, you know, conversation. There will be inbuilt conversations in the app, which you can uh, go through, record, listen, practice. Okay, such apps are also there. Uh, there are apps which uh, focus on accent, you know, how you can neutralize your accent. They focus on that, right? There are some apps which are tailored only to prepare you for exams, how you can prepare for certain exams. Now, there are some apps like Open Chat, Tandem, there is Hello Talk. These apps are built in such a way that you can talk to the person who is learning English in the same platform and who is in your phase of learning, okay? Excuse so me. you can. Uh, Alan? Yes, ma'am. Do you have a PPT to share? Yes, ma'am, I'm sharing. But uh, it's not visible. You have to share the button you have to press. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sure? Oh, is it? Huh. One it's second. not coming on the screen. Oh, okay. So I've gone Students are asking for it. Yes, yes. Yet use that button yeah, share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, is it now? Can you see this? Uh, Hi, yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. I think so it sorry. starts from yeah. earlier. Okay. Okay, I just, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so sorry. I didn't notice the toolbar up. I thought I'm sharing it. Okay, oh, okay. so uh, yes. I started with this uh, saying how important it is for you to adapt yourself, right? Uh, because uh, as Charles Darwin said, you see, it is not the strongest species that survive, but it's not the intelligent ones that survive, but the most adaptable ones that survive, right? Okay, so I also spoke about how adapting to the new technology and getting comfortable with the technology is the need of the art today, right? Okay, so, I think you heard this uh, talk of mine on why we need to learn English. You know, there are many reasons that I told you. You can just see the slide once again, that how English is the lingua franca, that is the bridging language, right? So if you want to communicate to people, English becomes a necessity today. Even statistically, three, uh, 350 million people use English as their first language. And half billion of people in the world use English for communication, even though it is not their native language, right? So it, it has become a language of communication. Now, when I say communication, please don't understand that English is communication skills, okay? Communication skills is different. English is different. English is a language. Communication skill is how much you have to talk, when you have to talk, you know, when you should not talk. These are skills, okay, which you can develop. Right, which you can develop. But whereas communication skills also has confidence as an inherent part of it. And when it comes to confidence, the command you have on language will definitely boost your 
confidence and in turn help you with communication skills okay so english will also open opportunities for you i told you in job it may be job just making friends being the integral part of a conversation lively conversation english opens the opportunities for you right and then english gives you access to some of the world's best universities so i told you about my experience about training doctors for gre exams you know engineers for uh, this tofel ielts exams how english gives you access to the best universities in the world you know these tofel and ielts are nothing but a basic english exams you know the listening reading writing skills are checked in these exams right and how you can prepare for these exams i will also deal with it like how you can prepare for these exams by using apps okay english opens your world to knowledge that is you can you can see that it's internet it's good publication books ebooks all of them are given to english so definitely this is a language of knowledge right yes with a brief uh, recaption uh, i'll just come to what is app based learning what are we going to learn today you know how we can learn through apps so app based learning is a very prevalent scenario very prevalent in today's scenario because of what we are going through like this lockdown you know uh, unlockdowns the learning learning should be a constant process it should never stop and the, there may there may be many hurdles which come your way but technology i'll tell you will definitely help you in a long way to continue this process of learning without any hurdles right so this app is learning is using mobile for learning see i'm not going to deal with how you can use some websites uh, you know so how we can use some e contents no i'm not venturing into that today i'm going to specifically stick to this that how you can use the apps in your mobile to learn for the specific needs you have whether it is grammar whether it is interview uh, whether it is job skills or whatever whatever is the need you can specifically use this apps right so uh, there are lot of contents available online which can be easily accessed because of the apps that you use and i was giving you the example of how the students have found a great relief in byju's app you know because of the books being coming alive you know you just don't have to read the book you, the books come alive through animation games quizzes word plays there's so much there you know i sometimes feel really our students are missing uh, missing out on a lot right so i was also telling how you are the digital natives and you are so compatible with technology and therefore it becomes easy for you to learn through apps okay so uh, there are many apps customized according to your needs and i was also telling you how these apps are customized like for example if your priority is grammar there are apps which are meant only for grammar okay uh, if there there are apps which are only meant for accent neutralization there are apps which help you in your academic writing so you can choose they are tailor made like according to your need therefore you have the choice of choosing what you want i was also giving you the example if you go to some english classes like english coaching centers and all they have some syllabus where you have to stick to that syllabus here anywhere any time anything that you want to read pertaining to the subject is available okay and also i would like to focus on the picture that i've put there you know 45% of users of mobile learning completed the courses faster than the who faster than those who took the modules on their computer uh, why is it it's just because of the practicality the portability of mobile you know when you have something in your hand when you want it right then you know there is no procrastination you will not say oh i'll i'll you know on the laptop later i log in later and do that later no you just have it in your hand you know whether it is a swayam app or you are doing some course on coursera the world's biggest online e content uh, website you just can log in and do your class you do your course or a session for that day for example you are have munching on your lunch okay and just open a quiz attempt a grammar quiz you know play the word play and it's so easy it's so easy to keep your learning going so these apps fall into three major different categories some of the apps use grammar word spelling you know the conventional method of teaching you english language whereas there are some apps which use conversation phrases to teach you english 
and I'll just give you a practical session or, uh, you know, of that, uh, those apps also. And then there are some apps which, in which you can talk to somebody who is also in that platform and have a conversation for 10 or 20 minutes with that person and talk about your learning so that by talking, you can also learn English. There are some hello talk, open chat, you know, but if you stick to your agenda of learning, these apps are good, right? Yes. So is app-based learning apt? Many, many parents have uh, you know, told, uh, Madam, is he really learning on the phone? You know, what is he using this phone for? Like he says he's learning, but I'm telling you, this is the best way to learn given the times we are in. This is the best way to learn. So I just want to put up some points which I find, uh, which I found to be very uh, useful supporting what I'm trying to put forth. So enhance interaction. See, for example, in my class, there are some 50 to 60 students. And as a human, I have my own limit that how I can be you know, available to them to interact with me, you see? So it becomes very easy with the apps that you can in interact with the app developer or the teacher whom you are having a demo with if you, have, if you are a subscribed customer, right? So you can have an enhanced interaction. You can give the feedbacks, you can ask questions. So your interaction is, uh, and I've seen that most of the apps are developed in such a way, the interface of that app is very, very friendly to the user, okay? So there are novel learning techniques. See, I must admit, these apps are on their way to uh, you know, sink in everything they get to better the learning process. The novel learning techniques, when I have to say this, I just uh, would like to refer to one app called Hello English, okay? Uh, previously, when I logged in and I was using that app, there were 22 Indian languages through which you could learn English. But just in few months, they've updated it to 25 Indian languages. See, you can learn English through your mother tongue. Now I'll show you the interface and see how we can use that. So there are many new techniques which are being used. And online resources, the next one. See, online resources are available, but most of the time we don't know. When we just go to Google and browse, learn to speak English, there is so much of e-content available there. You can't discern what should I read and what should I not read. So these kind of apps tailor it for you according to your need, right? And there's entertainment. See, this is what the students want. They don't want their learning, learning to be boring. And as a, te as a teacher, I always say, you should enjoy the process of learning. Only then you can learn that language, right? So how is this entertaining? There are many games, you know, many, uh, even I, you know, sometimes like to play those games, word games, word plays, you see, and quizzes. So this keeps you entertained and engaged, right? Uh, the next thing is availability 24 by seven. So you need not be in some uniform in campus or in certain place in a certain class to learn certain uh, skills. This is the best part of this app-based learning. You can, as I told you, you're munching on your lunch or you're just lying on your bed. You can go through those content and continue the process of learning. Okay. So the leisure hours can be utilized. It can be a routine task. And I, as a teacher, would definitely advise the students to take it as a routine task, at least 10 minutes a day. You see, it's not like you log into app today and next week you're logging into the same app. It doesn't help you. So there are many phases of learning. So you should take it up as a routine task. Every day, 10 minutes, you can give into these apps and then you can learn. So it's filling in the gaps. Like, you know, for maybe you're learning some other things. See, I'm not just speaking about English. You may be learning some other skills or subject. If there are certain things that you don't understand, there are apps available for everything under the sun today. Okay, so systematic learning activated. You know, there is a systematic process. You can't jump from one to other. You can't, and you know, I've seen some students, oh, ma'am, my English is better. So let me skip the first and basic and the intermediate. I'll go to the proficient level. Uh, maybe you just have to have a look at that intermediate phase also, where they teach you grammar step by step in such a way that you can understand it, right? Uh, yes, portability. You can carry it anywhere. What more you want? You know, there is no restriction. You can carry it anywhere, you know. And then most of the time, you know, more than just children, I put this, this because it has helped me, you see. So we just don't have to say, no, I, I don't want to start with the basics. No, there, 
the moment you start step by step, the learning process becomes interesting and as well as useful, okay? Sustainability. Now, why did I put this point, uh, sustainability? Because we will not, we'll be cutting less trees and earth will be a better place, I suppose, because of using apps, right? Many, uh, in many ways. Now, instant updates, like for example, uh, you give a test in a, in a manual way, then you need to wait for your results to come out, right? Whereas in these apps, the moment you submit your test, your quiz, your practice session, there is a update or a feedback on whatever you're doing. So there are many things I would not continue with this, track your children's progress, stay connected with the app. So today I'll just venture into the apps that I want to give a brief introduction to you, right? Uh, right. The first app that I'm just trying to explain here is Hello English app, okay? As I told you, this has 25 Indian languages through which you can learn your, uh, learn English, right? For example, your mother tongue is Kannada. You can choose Kannada and through Kannada, they'll be teaching you English language. So Hello English is a popular app for learning English. It lets you learn the language from 25 other languages and the app features 475 lessons offline support, a 10,000 word dictionary, and teachers to assist you. It also uses some fun teaching methods like daily news, audio and video clips, and even eBooks. The subscription are also reasonably priced. Uh, the subscription is 1,715 rupees for a year, okay? So I always said, recommend a yearly subscription if you want to take up. But before I say you know, anything about subscription, because most of the students may not be knowing how to do that. So always I suggest there is a lot of content in this app available for free, okay, totally free. So just go through these apps, use this content first, give the test, and if you find it to be useful, only then you subscribe, okay, right? And uh, yeah, only after subscription, you get the live teacher assistance in, these, in this app, okay? This is not totally free. Whereas this app, you know, Duolingo, is the world's top app today. This is totally free, okay? You need not pay anything here. But the only uh, problem with this app is you can learn English through Hindi, French, and there are no other, uh, you know, Indian languages mentioned here. So I'll not be delving deep into this app today, okay? Because you can learn uh, English through languages they have given the choice, right? Yes. So this is one more app. This is called Hello Talk app, okay? See, this app is a social network of sorts. It uses the social network to teach you. That is, you pair up with other individuals, okay? They teach you their language and you teach them yours. The exchange helps with conversational English, vocabulary, and even grammar. The app supports over 100 languages and includes voice calls, video calls, text messages, picture messages, and audio messages, right? So I would like to now take you through the uh, video that I have made of these apps so that, you see, I'll just, uh, yes, I hope I'm still sharing my screen. Uh, yes. So students, let us start with the practical version of this class. And right here in the Google Play Store, this site learned to speak English. And then you see there are so many English learning apps. Okay. So students, let us start with the practical session of this class. And right here in the Google Play Store, this site learned to speak English. And then you see there are so many English learning apps. Okay. Uh, you need to be wise when you choose these apps. For example, some apps you know, teach English through this. Let us start with the practical session of this class. And right here in the Google Play Store, this site learned to speak English. And then you see there are so many English learning apps. Okay. Uh, you need to be wise when you choose these apps. For example, some apps, you know, teach English through traditional methods, like you learn grammar, spelling, word, phrases, you see? Some apps teach you English through conversational methods, like you start a conversation, they give a situation, 
and then you move on right there are some apps which are majorly meant for accent training you need to be wise in choosing these apps according to your needs right today i'll just show you the students let us start with the practical session of this class and right here in the google play store just type learn to speak english and then you see there are so many english learning apps okay uh you need to be wise when you choose these apps for example some apps you know teach english through traditional methods like you learn grammar spelling words phrases you see some apps teach you english through conversational method like you start a conversation they give a situation and then you move on right there are some apps which are majorly meant for accent training you need to be wise in choosing these apps according to your needs right today i just show you and give you a glimpse of one of the apps that i have used that is learn to speak english the reason i chose this app is because it is very comprehensive detailed and easy to use so let's get started i have installed it they open this is the beautiful interface of this app english speaking basic regular english lessons business english lessons interview english lessons for example you are attending an interview uh, you can you know go through these lessons which will indeed help you travel english lessons if you are planning to travel uh, and you want to boost your travel vocab definitely these lessons will help you idioms and phrases you know these are the most beautiful part of it or uh, part of the language so you can go to those lessons listening lessons extra english lessons let me just take you to the first aspect close the app the first aspect that is english speaking basic has three parts and in the first part we have 29 lessons and when you get into the first one that is the usage of i am they give you a brief detail uh, explanation on how what is i am and how is it used okay and then you have example now these sentences which are in blue if you just click on them you see you can hear the pronunciation part i'm 23 years old right listening is the best way to learn a language so you hear that then you can also record your uh, voice just by clicking here and then you can record it and play so this is the best part of this app you can practice learn practice learn practice which makes you learn the language quicker now let me take you to an another app that i've used that is english conversation practice okay this app you see will give you this kind of interface where there are different situations mentioned here and then when you log in there you see uh you can see the conversation between kathy and mom two persons and you can go through that conversation and also you can hear the conversation just there mom. so once you are through this conversation go to quiz and then you can check your memory how much you remember out of that conversation then go to practice you know you can role play where you can pick up the role of kathy and have a conversation with the mom and then you can record your own conversation and see how far you're doing well with this learn okay uh, it's a quite interesting and entertaining way of learning right let me take you to and another app which i've used for this hello english okay so just say open and you see you have you can see this since i've used it it's already there when I mean, before in the beginning it gives you an option of 25 languages okay through which language you would like to learn english so i chose in kannada and therefore i am on this page so you see home basic course right you can also say lessons which you want to choose okay 
I just reset. So th this is the profile. You see, you can see what are the options here. And uh, this hat, you know, as I have told you already, has a dictionary of 10,000 words. Okay, that's huge. And you can also earn by teaching others if you are fluent in English. You have different courses, home, where you can see these courses are meant for IELTS exams. And then you have general English grammar courses also. You have TOEFL courses. And you need to remember that these some of these courses are charged. It's not very clearly uh, audible. That's what the students are saying. Are oh, is it, ma'am? You see? Uh, it's not clearly. Uh, it's not okay. Clear. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, can I then explain it uh, like this? This is yeah, this voice yeah. is audible. Okay, huh. then I'll mute the video and explain it. Okay. Uh, yes, I'll explain it. Right. So, students, this is Google Play Store. Okay, where I've logged in. This is Google Play Store. Just say learn to speak English or want to speak English, whatever. And you can see that there are so many apps which are shown here. Right. So many apps. So you may get confused, like which app to use. Right. So I want you to be sure the way you want to learn English. Is it like from the basics? Would you like to learn it through grammar, right? Or conversation method? So you need to be very clear about it before you make the choice of these apps, right? Okay. So some apps teach you English through grammar. So, and uh, if you get into that, you may think this is the way I'm going to learn here and you may get bored. So try to know what app, there will be a, always a description before you install, you can just read the description, see the reviews, okay? So today I will take you through an app called Learn to Speak English. Now the reason I chose this app is, I found it to be very user-friendly, uh, comprehensive, as well as very detailed, okay? So Learn to Speak app, just say open, I've installed it, so open. So these are the, this is the interface, you see, when you open this, this interface is seen. So you have English speaking basics, regular English, business English, interview English. For example, you're already planning for to attend an interview, then you can, you know, practice through this. Travel English, if you want to boost your travel vocab, you can use these lessons. Uh, idioms and phrases, def these definitely make your language beautiful. So there are wonderful classes there, you can just go through them. Listening lessons extra English lessons. Okay. So uh, let me, you know, I thought I'll start with the first one. See, these kind of ads pop in that time, you need to be careful that you don't let into those ads and get distracted and don't give your details there. And also remember most of these apps ask for email ID and phone number, which is secure to give. Okay. So today I took the first lesson in the first basics. Here, there is a brief description of what the word I am, the detail about it. And there are examples which are followed. See, when you click on this uh, blue colored sentence, okay, you can hear the pronunciation part of it, right? Uh, I think the audio is not clear there because I've recorded it in the screen recorder. So you can also click on this green button, okay, here and record your voice and then listen to your voice. So that's the most beautiful part, right? You can learn and practice and see whether you are matching it to the right pronunciation, okay? <clears throat> Later, when we, as we come back, there are 29 lessons here on different uses. And then you can also see there are extra English lessons here. You can go through that, uh, you know. So I've stopped here for learn to speak English. Let me take you to another app, English conversation practice, okay? Uh, this is, if you know English and you want to practice English, you already know some of something about English, you can't, you know, uh, manage yourself in English, then you can choose this app where you can, they give you situations and conversation. For example, you know, I've chosen it. I've chosen a, a conversation about a picnic, okay, with, between my mom and a daughter. You go through this conversation, you see, and then you can also listen to their pronunciation, right? And then you can continue with the practices. Like for example, there is quiz, okay? So that's a memory check, how much you remember from that conversation. Then you can always go to practice. Here you can role play. You can choose yourself to be Kathy and role play her conversation here, record it and then practice it. You see, uh, this is the 
very this is a very nice app if you want to improvise on the language and pronunciation okay right so this was about english conversation app it has a very good review also the third app which i would like to show is hello english app okay this app uses 25 languages to teach you since i've already logged in i can't show you but the moment you install it and say open it gives you an option of 25 languages and through which you want to learn language since i've chosen kannada it is showing my interface in kannada okay and since i've chosen basic it starts with very basic you know like from like uh, framing a sentence it starts from there okay right so this app you know has a lot of options lot of options like it will also ask you whether you are learning english for a job or you are learning english for an interview or you, are you travel or are you planning to travel abroad like what is the reason and then this app tailors it tailors your need and then provides you the material so this is the profile you see and then you have these lessons basic course lessons because i have opted for basic it is showing the basic course lessons this is ielts programs which this app has toefl lessons it has it has general english classes also you see like grammar of basic from article verb what is a verb you have lot of classes here i mean you just have to get in and see what a world it is it's a world in itself okay so next we have uh, here basic courses okay that you can go through once you install the app and also we have uh, all the courses you can see what are the other courses they are trying to give us right and uh, there is one option here called live okay i just want you to see that there's uh, one option here called live where you can meet the teachers okay uh, there are teachers who come live and you can talk to them uh they also teach you and they'll also answer your doubts right that is uh here in the teacher session see these are the teachers who are there and you can have a conversation with them and the practice session of this app is so huge you see every day you can take up practice sessions and you can practice as well as there are games you know to build your language skills okay so this was a brief practical tour for you about the three apps which i have used and found to be very useful and i say this from the student perspective okay so there are many apps this cake app is totally free you can also try that there are good word games you know uh, and uh, there's one more called one more called cambly app you know even that is having good reviews and i haven't used that but these are the apps which i have used and i can tell you will be of great help to you okay right so yes i'm sorry for this i'm still sharing my screen okay sorry okay no issues uh these are the other apps which i haven't shown you and one thing these apps are available in google play store as well as uh, on iphone okay in android as well as iphone these are available free to install you know only thing is if you want help in specific exam based material it is then they ask you for payment so i would suggest you that uh, you know in the beginning just don't try to pay uh, try to go through the material see what is available is suitable for you or not and then you may take a call for this apps okay uh, one thing i would like to also suggest students is google translate you know this is the most beautiful app i've uh, seen these apps uh, this app translates uh, you know anything you know for example if you show a picture and you don't know what is it called even in your mother tongue this app can help you find the name of that uh, thing okay place and also if somebody is talking to you in another language which you excuse can't understand excuse me yes the screen yes, is showing something else it's uh can you see ma'am ha now it can okay i'm sorry for this <laughs> i'm using a different laptop and, uh, okay uh like these are the top 10 apps in the world today okay uh, i told you the reason already why i didn't choose duolingo okay so we went through a, we took a tour of this learn to speak english and i would suggest that the students take up this app first okay because this is very comprehensive detailed 
and it takes you step by step okay and once you have mastered a bit of it you know you know how to frame sentences and you are good in conversation and you want to improvise uh, your language then you go for this app called english conversation practice as i showed you there will be a given imaginary situation where you can you, are, you can imagine that you are in that situation and start a conversation a role play and then practice it record it listen to your own conversation what more do you want you know it's at your fingertips that you can effectively improve your language skills okay so hello english as i told you this is uh, again learning english through your mother tongue okay and then i spoke about google translate hello talk okay so simply learn american english now when uh, today the corporate world has uh, been used to two kinds of english right the american english and the british english you see so you need to be very careful the way you phrase your sentences and even in your pronunciation many a times so if you're working if you plan to work in a corporate sector i would definitely suggest you go through this app to improvise on your pronunciation that is your accent okay and the standup this is again like hello talk hello talk because in this app you are uh, able to chat with somebody who is also learning english uh, you can talk to them have a conversation live conversation with somebody uh, but in this you need to stick to the agenda and uh, see to it that you use it in the right way okay right so i think uh, this was the you know uh, this was the explanation that i could give about app based learning and i would expect some questions from you now because i know most of you would have already tried it so yes uh, is there any app for bank bank exams ah uh, yes ma'am uh, there are many Very apps good. yes um, that's the question um, asked by a participant okay so <clears throat> if you want to prepare for bank exam then uh, you have questions from uh, aptitude you see you have questions from language so they are tailor made in such a way that these are uh, used for that specific exam as i told you hello english you know this english app is will also ask you in the beginning whether you are going to take up this course for an exam okay if you are choosing the reason for this course is exam then it gives you some uh, details you know it gives you some options where you can choose the kind of exam that you are taking and uh, you can use this app for the same need there is one more uh, app also pocket aptitude if i remember uh, and there is uh, one more app uh, i don't remember right now grade up or some app is there which is these apps contain not only english but the aptitude the logical reasoning the verbal reasoning all those parts which become a part of the banking exam is also included in them so they are specifically for bank exams okay uh, i will leave the email id if you uh, if you just mail me i can uh, you know go through those apps and also recommend you which app you can use one participant asks are these uh, apps are in american english or british english okay uh, that's a really good question okay so more, uh, the one app that i showed you that is a uh, conversation based app I, which i showed you is based on american english you know the pronunciation part the language part the phrases is based on uh, one second am i am i visible okay. yes yes so this app is based on uh, american english whereas when it comes to uh, hello english and uh, when it comes to learn to speak english i think it is british english there i am speaking about the three englishes that uh, three apps that i have shown so now when you come to duolingo you know uh, this app is totally by an american com american company the develop uh, the app is developed by americans and it is an american english app uh memorize is also american english app and google translate of course uses american english right so yes any other questions exams are based on the sessions that they teach right huh? yes definitely yeah. ma'am 
the exams which they ask are there uh, or the quizzes not uh, they call it quizzes games and all right uh, like for example you first take up articles and you have taken a class in article then they will complete those class you will complete those classes in article then after that there will be a quiz or a test based on articles which you have learned so it will be uh, you know designed in such a way you know it will be content based it's not like you read go through some 10 contents and take a final exam it's not like that you take up one content go through that content and you are going to just see how you are faring well in that topic topic and um, yes uh, yes one of the participants asks uh, could you give link of this yes. link is yes yes Yes. Uh, see, link I can easily give if it was available. Like if I was making a video of myself, since I'm using a Zoom platform, okay. Now I will not be able to give the link here, right? So I can do two things. That is, one is I will just leave my email ID with the participants with the you know uh, here right here. I'm just going to type it. Uh, so you can uh, you know mail me and just uh, see that if you if I can help you there. Uh, uh, is my screen visible? Yes, yes, yes. So this is my email ID. Uh, you can just mail me, and I'll send the link. Actually, there is no need for this because if you have Google Play Store in your mobile, okay, uh, you can just go there and say "Learn to Speak English," okay, yes. or "I want to speak English" or "English Learning Apps," something like that. So all the apps will pop up there. okay there are innumerable apps so that's why i chose some and showed it because you should not be confused so you can click on these apps which i have shown here and start your learning process okay they specifically don't no need of having a link there you just can go to google play store even if it is an android phone or a iphone go to the play store click learn english and choose select these apps and download them and once you are you already know the how abouts of this apps then you will be you know confident to choose the other apps according to your need okay. one more question is there um which is the best app to learn vocabulary a student okay asks. yes uh yes one one second i'll just uh... so i have shown you a uh, hello english app right so this app i told you has 10000 words dictionary right uh, is my screen shared again is there a problem no not yet no. okay thank you uh, yes i i i have given a brief description about uh, hello english app It's i like i on the screen at present okay okay i'll just show you. give me a minute yes yes now it's visible it's visible okay yes so this is the app i'm talking about uh yes i'll just uh, fi okay yeah this app has can you see this this is what i told 10000 this is what really you know uh took my attention to this app is 10000 word dictionary and the best part of using an app not a dictionary why i say this is in a dictionary you can read the word fi find the word find the meaning and then the pronunciation part is also given the phonetic part is given well good but how do you really figure out how to pronounce it when it come to this kind of apps you can just click on the speaker uh, icon and you can see uh, they will pronounce the word for you in the right way in the native uh, you know speaker will pronounce that word and then you can learn the pronunciation part meaning part as well as synonyms can be easily found out because there will be so much of other you know links given from that part right so and also one best part of this app is uh, it uses the dictionary according to the grammar topics for example you, you take a word and how do you use it as an article or as a noun or as a verb as an adverb how do you use it as a adjective how do you is it in a different forms of grammar can also be found right so that's the best part and therefore i recommend you use this and the last one but most important is 
it will have the meaning of that word in kannada also if you have given your uh, choice of language as kannada or hindi or telugu right so what more do you want to learn the vocabulary and uh, yes i forgot one more thing you can see that these apps are tailor made you know the first app i showed you learn to speak english it is tailor made in such a way for example you are attending an interview you know and you want to pep up the uh, interview vocabulary you can go to those lessons right and improvise on your vocabulary which would help you in an interview so this is also noted right so everything is available even public speaking and all there is yes, a question but, uh, by a participant uh ma'am in the apps that i have shown you right now uh, the public speaking is not available hmm. this okay? is purely uh, yeah. developing effective english english language, language yes right. and uh, in this uh, duolingo app which is totally free it's just not english you want to learn any other language like hebrew uh, you want to learn uh, spanish french you know you can oh. learn through hindi But through hindi yes so that is my idea yeah no uh, this hello english you can learn english through your mother like indian languages 25 indian languages yeah yes Yeah, it was very informative and knowledgeable. That's what the students are sending the message. Uh, they wanted to know, they wanted to have a very comprehensive knowledge about uh, app-based learning. And you have highlighted that the most uh, uh, useful ten names you have given. The yes, yes. App-based learning. I think yes, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. I have used them. uh because i can uh, tell that which uh, you know authority that this was going to help students in a great way because we are in difficult times you know yes. where we can't access teachers so easily and i feel this is going to help them in a great way and therefore uh, you know this would help if they try to install it and just be yeah. careful they don't get into this pop up ads you know distracted mm -hmm. or That's just uh, in the beginning only pay some subscriptions for no need of that yeah. there's so much available for free right so yes. that's sufficient if they make use of the yes. free yes. availability of the yes yes okay. now when they are free now especially staying at home they can yes. make use of these apps and then learn english and yes. improve their english yes ma'am yes that was very good uh, very comprehensive ideas of uh, this app based learning you have given professor cherian Are you going to continue? Do you have got something uh, to share with the students? Or? No, no, ma'am. Uh, I think I would be happy if there are any questions. I'm ready to answer. Yes, yes. That's what uh, they have asked. The public speaking. Public speaking is not there here. It's not there, ma'am. Because we concentrated on English learning. Yes, yes. English learning. Yes. But there Even are apps, apps. There are apps, there are apps for apps. public speaking. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if they mail me. i can just go through them and also see the reviews use them and let them know if they can use so they it. have they have got to go to google type google play english store learning. yes play yes. store google english play learning store. yeah and not google they... toolbar but there is an app called google play store in every android phone okay yes. so they can just go there type learn speak learn to speak english and there are so many you know apps which come up there and i've chosen the best 3 and showed them how they operate also the interface of this apps also so they can use those apps but they have got to pursue their learning it's not yes. one time learning every oh, day as, yes. yes as you said they should yes. be very disciplined also yes. at least yes. 10 minutes 20 yes. minutes they have got to the dedicate self, for this yes hmm. the self motivation you know ma'am that's huh. why i started with why learn english you know that conviction should be there in us that yes you need to recognize the need first and when you have that realization 
just 10 minutes a day, you know, that is very important. You should make it a routine instead. For example, morning you get up, finish your prayers and all, then yeah, 10 minutes of a English class. It helps a lot. One grammar class, one quiz, one word play will definitely enrich your vocab and also you the way you phrase sentences. Mm -hmm. right? So persistence should be there. When yes. they continuously yes. pursue this, uh, it yes. would be easy for them to yes. acquire effective English language skills and even to increase vocabulary and all. Yes, yes, ma'am. One more thing, you know, ma'am, in the class, when you give tests to the students, you know, ask quizzes and all, they're inhibited because they, of the peer, you know, what would they think about me or should I give this answer or not? But here it's technology and you, nobody to judge you. Just give your answers, enjoy whether you're able to learn well, and then, you know, carry on. So that's one of the best parts. The fear is not there. Yes. The people would laugh at us, their classmates yes. would laugh, nothing. Yes. They and yes. their Google yes. teacher. Google. <laughs> yes. Okay. That's a very good idea and a very good suggestion. Uh, now it is 12 uh, participants. You would be getting the link for the questions to attempt based on today's both the sessions. You have got time till tomorrow morning. You have got to go to the link. You can even view once again, these videos are available on YouTube. You have got to go to the search bar, type VBN degree college, day one, day two, day three, day four. Today is the fifth day. So till day five, all the videos are uploaded. You can go watch it and then attempt these questions. So attempting the test is very, very important. As I have already stressed that if you are able to score above 50%, then you will get course completion certificate. And if you are not able to complete uh, or score um, above 50%, then you will be get e-certificate of participation. So please do try to score above 60%. And there is no need for anybody to again inquire about the marks or to tell that so many, uh, so much, uh, so many answers correct they have got or anything. These are all uh, um, auto-corrected uh, tests and you will get the marks that you deserve. The right answer will automatically get right marks. Okay. Those students, again, there are a lot of queries for us. Uh, we have not registered for the course yet. Now we want to join and register the course. Will we be getting the certificate? Yes, you'll be getting the certificate. You need not have to register now. What you have got to do is you have got to go to YouTube and log in and then uh, view, watch these videos. At the end of the session, you will get the questions, attempt those questions, give a feedback and you will be writing your email name college name etc so automatically your name gets registered and you'll be getting the certificate there is no doubt at all so please do click on the link attend the test give your feedback and be eligible to get e-certificate of this national level student development program uh, yes both the sessions were very useful. That's what the students have sent the feedback on behalf of the management, um, CA and A, principal, faculty members, and all the students at VVN Degree College. I express my hearty gratitude to Professor Alice Cherian for giving a very comprehensive idea about app-based learning, because this is in vogue now. Everybody has a mobile in their hand and online classes are going on. You can dedicate at least 10 or 20 minutes time of yours every day and then make use of the apps available. So knowledge is available at the tip of your fingers. And the example that Professor Alice gave in the beginning of the, her talk was very, very relevant. Uh, that is, we have the power in us but it is up to us how we are going to use the potential that we have got. So wishing that all of you would make use of these sessions and improve your English, develop an effective English language communicative skills.
I welcome you again for tomorrow's session, day six. Tomorrow, first session, you will have on phonetics. And then you will have William Shakespeare's language learning to William Shakespeare. At times, there were questions by the participants. At times, there is some other uh, topic is taken up um, in the sessions. Yes, it is happening because uh, the resource persons uh, need some adjustments. Hence, we are doing this adjustments, but all the topics will be covered. Wishing you all the best and good luck for the session. Take care, stay at home and stay blessed. Have a good day. Asana, madam, thank you. It was a very useful session for me also. Yes. And I have noted three apps. I wanted to thank her, but she left the. Uh,